experiment to measure the amount of dissolved oxygen in a sample of water by means of redox titration. In this experiment, we will measure the amount of dissolved oxygen in a sample of water using a method known as the Winkler method. This experiment involves collecting a sample of water in a bottle. Pour some of the water being analysed into the bottle. Shake the bottle a few times and empty out the water. Rinsing out the bottle with water removes any impurities, wets the inside of the bottle and helps avoid trapped air bubbles. Submerge the bottle completely in the water to be analysed and fill the bottle right to the top. The bottle is then stoppered. When collecting the water, it is important that no air is present in the bottle as this would raise the oxygen level and give an inaccurate result. Therefore, the bottle must be completely filled to the top. Remove the stopper from the bottle. Then, using a graduated dropper, insert the end of the dropper under the surface of the water in the bottle and add 1 cm cubed of manganese 2 sulfate solution. Using another graduated dropper, insert the end of the dropper under the surface of the water and add 1 cm cubed of the alkaline potassium iodide solution. Since both solutions are quite dense, note that these solutions sink to the bottom of the bottle. Note the brown precipitate being formed in the bottle. What is happening can be explained as follows. When the manganese 2 sulfate solution, MnSO4, and alkaline potassium iodide solution, a mixture of NaOH and Ki, are added to the water, the Mn2 plus ions and the OH minus ions from the alkali react together to form a white precipitate of manganese 2 hydroxide, as shown in the equation on screen. This white precipitate of manganese 2 hydroxide then reacts with the dissolved oxygen in the water to form a brown precipitate of manganese 3 hydroxide. The equation for this reaction is shown on the screen. Stop for the bottle. There will be a slight overflow of the water. Shake the bottle vigorously for about half a minute. Allow the brown precipitate to settle for a few minutes until there is at least a 5 cm depth of clear liquid below the stopper. Using graduated dropper, carefully add 1 cm cubed concentrated sulfuric acid to the bottle, allowing the acid to flow down the inside of the glass. Restopper the bottle carefully to avoid dissolving any oxygen from the air. Shake the bottle to re-dissolve the precipitate. If the precipitate is difficult to dissolve, we may have to add a few more drops of concentrated sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid that we added to the bottle causes the iodide ions from the alkaline Ki to react with the manganese 3 hydroxide to liberate iodine. The equation for this reaction is shown on the screen. At this stage, we can see the red brown colour due to the liberated iodine. The amount of iodine is determined by titrating it against standard sodium thiosulfate solution.
We will now perform two titrations to determine the concentration of iodine in the water sample. Using a pipette, 100 cm cubed were placed from the bottle into a conical flask. Note that we are using a large sample so the pipette was filled a number of times. The burette was filled to the zero mark with sodium thiosulfate solution. Titrate in the usual manner until a pale straw colour is obtained. Add a few drops of starch solution and continue titrating until the blue-black colour disappears. Repeat the procedure with a second sample from the bottle. 
since it will not be possible to carry out a third titration due to the capacity of the bottle, the second titration figure obtained must be as accurate as possible. Knowing the amount of iodine liberated, it is quite easy to calculate the amount of dissolved oxygen in the water. The results are always expressed in parts per million. The method of calculating this is shown in your textbook. That concludes the experiment.